Ten things you didn't know about Alassane Ouattara, President of Ivory Coast. Hello, Displorers. Welcome to another informative video presented to you by Displore. In this video, we shall examine 10 things you didn't know about Alassane Ouattara. Alassane Draman Ouattara is an Ivorian politician born in Haute Volta, who has been President of Ivory Coast since 2010. A man who came into the political scene with a much cleaner slate than half of the African leaders can ever boast of. He has been thought to have been infected by the African power bug. He showed no sign of being power hungry, but it seems the dictator virus was too strong for his politically clean system. While most people judge him only from his presidential angle, Mr. Watara is a man of many talent, which is not common knowledge to many people. Hence, to fully understand the man, all his angles need to be perfectly drawn for all to see. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. An economist by profession, Watara has made several changes to the economic policies of his country and the continent as a whole. Hence, before he launches another economic groundbreaking policy, let us take a look at 10 things you probably didn't know about President Watara. Number 1. He married twice. Watara was born on 1st January 1942 in Dimbokro in French West Africa. He is a descendant on his father's side of the Muslim rulers of Burkina Faso, then part of the Kong Empire, also known as the Watara or Watara Empire. Watara is of Muslim background and is a member of the Dula people. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in 1965 from the Drexel Institute of Technology, now Drexel University, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. His Master's degree in Economics in 1967 and a PhD in Economics in 1972 from the University of Pennsylvania. Watara has two children. David Draman Watara and Fanta Catherine Watara from his first marriage to American Barbara Jean Davis. In 1991, Watara married Dominique Nouvian, a French Catholic businesswoman of Jewish descent. Number 2. He has an extensive successful career at financial institutions. He was an economist for the International Monetary Fund in Washington, D.C from 1968 to 1973, and afterwards, he was the Chargé de Mission in Paris of the Banque Centrale des États de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, BCEAO, from 1973 to 1975. With the BCEAO, he was then Special Advisor to the Governor and Director of Research from February 1975 to December 1982, and Vice Governor from January 1983 to October 1984. From November 1984 to October 1988, he was director of the African Department at the IMF, and in May 1987, he additionally became counselor to the managing director at the IMF. On 28 October 1988, he was appointed as governor of the BCEAO and was sworn in on December 22, 1988. Watara has a reputation as a hard worker keen on transparency and good governance, virtues which are questioned when he joins politics. Number 3. As Prime Minister of Ivory Coast, he attempted snatching power. In April 1990, the IMF under the Structural Adjustment Program forced the Ivorian President, Felix Houphouet Bonny, to accept Ouattara as chairman of the Interministerial Committee for Coordination of the Stabilization and Economic Recovery Program of Cote d'Ivoire. While holding that position, Ouattara also remained in his post as BCEAO governor. He subsequently became Prime Minister of Cote d'Ivoire on 7 November 1990, still under the IMF imposition, after which Charles Conan Bani replaced him as interim BCEAO governor. While serving as Prime Minister, Ouattara also tried illegally and against the Constitution to carry out presidential duties for a total of 18 months, including the period from March to December 1993, when Hofwe Boni was ill. 
When Hofwe Boini died, Watara tried wrestling power from Henry Conan Bedie over the presidential succession in total disregard for the constitution that clearly gave Bedie the legal right to lead the country. Bedie prevailed and Watara resigned as prime minister, then returned to the IMF as deputy managing director. Number 4. His father's nationality cost him the presidency the first time he wanted to run for presidency. Prior to the October 1995 presidential election, the National Assembly of Cote d'Ivoire approved an electoral code that barred candidates if either of their parents were of a foreign nationality and if they had not lived in Cote d'Ivoire for the preceding five years. Both clauses worked against him as his father was rumored to be from Burkina Faso and he had not lived in the country since 1990 as he worked with the IMF. The rally of the Republicans, RDR, an opposition party formed as a split from the ruling Democratic Party of Côte d'Ivoire, PDCI, in 1994, and sought for Ouattara to be its presidential candidate. Despite being a candidate of the RDR, the electoral code was still not in his favor. Hence, RDR boycotted the election along with the Ivorian Popular Front, FPI, of Lohong Bagbo, leaving the PDCI's candidate incumbent president, Henri Conan Bédié, to win an easy victory. Number 5. He was accused of forging documents. While serving as deputy managing director at the IMF in 1998, Watara expressed his intention to return to Côte d'Ivoire and take part in politics again. After leaving the IMF in 1999, he was elected president of the RDR and was chosen as its candidate for the next presidential election, but his eligibility still came in question. He said he was eligible to stand in the election, pointing to documents he said demonstrated that he and his parents were of Ivorian birth. He was accused of forging these papers in an investigation took off. President Bidier described Ouattara as a book in a bay and said that Hofwe Bogni wanted Alassane Ouattara to concern himself only with the economy. Ouattara's national certificate, issued in late September 1999, was annulled by a court in October. An arrest warrant for Ouattara was issued in November, but he was out of the country and only returned when the military seized power, Ustin Bédié. Number 6. He finally became president, or was he? Watara joined forces with some of the country's opposition and they went in for the presidential run which was postponed from 2005 to 2010 due to tensions. Watara was declared winner but the ruling FBI contested the results before the Constitutional Council, claiming Bagbo won. These charges were contradicted by United Nations observers which was unlike African Union observers who call every victory in Africa as fraudulent. After the inauguration of Bagbo, Watara, who was recognized as the winner by most countries and the United Nations, organized an alternative inauguration. These events raised fears of resurgence of the civil war, as thousands of refugees fled the country. The 2010 presidential election led to the 2010-2011 Ivorian crisis and the second Ivorian civil war. UN and French forces took military action against Bagbo and he was taken into custody after a raid into his residence on the 11th of April 2011. The country was severely damaged by the war and observers say it will be a challenge for Watara to rebuild the economy and reunite Ivorians. Number 7. Watara was kept as prisoner in a hotel. The newly elected president of the troubled Ivory Coast was blocked in the hotel as neither he nor the linens on which he slept could leave except by helicopter. They were flown out to be dry cleaned across town and flown back at night, just like everything else that came or went from the resort hotel, where Alassane Ouattara took refuge after he was declared winner of the November 28, 2010 election. Despite unanimous recognition of his victory abroad, world opinion was not being able to sway sitting president Lohang Bagbo to leave the presidential palace he had occupied for 10 years. He deployed troops around the hotel like a noose 
and choked off the exit, imposing a blockade. The only way to reach the man considered to be the legitimate president of Ivory Coast was by a United Nations helicopter, which ferried diplomats and journalists on daily flights, as well as groceries for the hotel's kitchen, cases of liquor for the bar, and the president's freshly pressed pillowcase. The Gulf Hotel at one point almost ran out of food and was barely able to offer a single meal a day. The formerly manicured lawns were strewn with trash and drying laundry laid out under the blasting sun. Number 8. 2012 Marriage Law Row In a controversial move in November 2012, President Watara sacked his government in a row over a new marriage law that would make wives joint heads of the household. His own party supported the changes, but the element of ruling coalition resisted, with the strongest opposition coming from the Democratic Party of Ivory Coast. This still did not deter the opinionated leader from running with what he wanted. Number 9. He went back on his promise against a third term. Alassane Ouattara won a second five-year term in 2015, with almost 84% of vote, and at the RDR's Third Ordinary Congress in 2017, it was expected that Ouattara would be elected as president of the RDR. He instead proposed Hanwe Diabate for the post, and she was duly elected by acclamation. In March 2020, Ouattara announced he would not run again in the presidential elections after the 1st October 2020 and supported Prime Minister Amadou Gon Koulibaly as president candidate of the RDR. After the sudden death of Koulibaly and drug trafficking allegations on the next peak, Hamed Bakayoko, Ouattara announced a run for a third term in office. His candidacy was controversial as the Ivorian constitution only allows two terms. His bid sparked violent protest throughout the country and the election of October 2020 was boycotted by a large part of the opposition, leading to the re-election of Ouattara with 95.31%. Number 10. He's seen as a double-faced man. Ouattara's time in office is seen as mostly successful, but critics say he has turned a blind eye to entrenched corruption and the boom has failed to trickle down to the poor. A former supporter who has gone over to the opposition said that Watara's third term bid showed that the mask has fallen. He presented himself as a humanist, a man of peace, a senior civil servant in the Western style who wanted democracy. The ex-supporter said on condition of anonymity. He is like most African presidents, a chief who wants to keep power for his clan and doesn't hesitate to use repression. A government minister responded by saying that the president was sacrificing himself. Due to his third term, besides killings, more than 15,000 Ivorians have fled the country in fear of a return to the civil war that helped bring Ouattara to power. Although tensions have since simmered down, international observers worry that the comparative calm comes at the expense of Ivory Coast's already fragile democracy. Since independence from France in 1960, Ivorians have never witnessed the peaceful democratic transfer of power. There you have it, the explorers. Those were 10 things you didn't know about Alassane Ouattara. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.